My name is Sean Smart and I'm a master's student in zoology and I study statistical models of evolution. So Vinnat, tell me a bit about your research and what you're studying and what you're working towards and just a bit about it, just explain it. So I did zoology here at Lincoln for my undergrad and that's a very broad course and then I kind of honed in on, I really enjoyed the more statistical side of that so when it came to my master's project, I was talking with um, one of my lecturers, Manabu Sakamoto, and he suggested this project that I'm doing, which is basically when you model trait evolution, it tends to go on a graph and the different shapes of the graph uh, suggest different ways of evolution. Yeah. Sometimes it can be quite fast. Sometimes it's just kind of stays the same and sometimes it moves towards in a specific direction. For instance, um, increasing body size over time. We see this in the ancestors of horses. And to, we categorize these graphs using statistics. We don't just kind of guess and judge them by eye. But recently, a paper came out saying that the way the maths we use to categorize the models biases towards a specific model as a and as a result of that they wanted to investigate this more but they used simulated data because it's an awful lot of work to get a bunch of um, empirical data real data from the published literature to test against for the past six months i've just been trawling through papers going into the supplementary materials, grabbing data sets, and then you have to neaten up everything so it all is in the same format. And I'm just going to run a big program that tests essentially, does this bias that we see in statistical data exist when using real data? Yeah, wow, that sounds very interesting and like complex. There's a lot to that. So what kind of like made you want to study that particular area and research into that? and Focus on that. So part of it, and this is sort of a continuation from when I did my undergrad dissertation. I have very broad interest within kind of the topic of zoology. So I took a more skills-based approach. I want to kind of move into doing paleontology. So um, focusing on dinosaurs, other extinct animals, things like that. And because we have such small data sets, there's only so many fossils of a given animal, say Tyrannosaurus rex. It's often, we often use statistics to make the most out of the data we have. And so within that, I kind of looked for skills that I could pick up to explore those ideas and that are useful in that field. And I, chat, I had a chat with my undergrad uh, dissertation supervisor, Charles Deeming, and he said, well, you could, do, you could look at how shape of beaks in birds links to feeding and diet. So I did that and it was, it was all right. I enjoyed it. I yeah. thought it was fairly good. Um, and then Manabu, uh, when it came to my master's, I was saying, oh, I want something more, a bit more broad, a bit more evolutionary than just um, kind of diet based. And he said, well, this paper came out a couple of years ago and no one's really done anything with it because it's an awful lot of work but it's perfect for a master's student to do yeah. um, so he's kind of coached me through that having to understand how the models work to work out why we're seeing this bias was very difficult um, I don't really have a maths background at all so yeah. that's been a big step for me but um, Manabu has been really helpful um, yeah. And the uni in general has been quite helpful. Yeah, so there's good support available then if you get stuck and there's people there to support you and Absolutely. help you, like you said. Um, no, it's really nice. So um, tell me a bit about your postgraduate experience and how's it going and what is it actually like being a postgraduate researcher? So I think it's important to make the distinction that I am a master's by research student as opposed to a taught master's student. So if I was a taught master's student, it would broadly be the same as third year you have modules and lectures either online or in a classroom and you have a smaller end of pro end of year project but being a research master's student 
it's essentially all project. So you've got to be really self-motivated and have that drive to do it yourself. Absolutely. And... Um, you need a lot of self-discipline to do it, as yeah. you said. Um, and it's kind of ebbed and flowed over the year, or well, over the year that I've been doing it. But I have had a good time. I've learned a lot about how to work, how to stay productive, um, how to find that balance, because especially because as opposed to working in a lab, mine is all data-based and online. So I'm sitting at my own desk all day. So it can be difficult sometimes to find that work-life balance when, yeah, you know, if you're watching something uh, on the laptop, it's the same seat that I do all my work yeah. in. Um, I know, and that's a really important thing, especially in today's um, kind of modern day with after COVID and everyone working from home, it is that work like, balance, you are kind of stuck in one place with a computer and things. So how would you split that up as a postgraduate? What do you find um, helps you balance that out? This, this might sound a bit silly, but um, one of the things I do is I'll sit at my desk working on my laptop during the day and like in the evenings or say on a weekend when it's, you know, not work time, I'll sit on my bed with my laptop to give that kind of space separation. Yeah. So I, I kind of say to myself, oh, that will mean when I sit down at the desk, my mind will think it's time to work. Yeah. Does it work? <laughs> um, I think it does a little bit. Yeah. No, it's good. You have like these little trip, like tips and tricks that you do for yourself and you know yourself. So, and it's also handy for other people to hear um, if they're going through the same thing as well. Absolutely. Um, try different things to get through it because it is like you're on your own really, yeah. aren't you? So even though you've got the support, you've got to be like so well disciplined, it sounds like. I tried a lot of different kind of organisation systems. Yeah. The amount of variations of a to-do list that I have gone through before finding one that I feel makes good sense for me. Similarly, with um, work times, some people are a big fan of the Pomodoro method where you do like 25 minutes, then a five minute break. Um, I found better that what works for me is kind of doing a 45 minute chunk, then a 15 minute break, get a cup of tea, go to the bathroom, chat to one of my housemates for a bit, and I feel those larger blocks of time are better but other people swear by shorter chunks. So I think trying different systems, mixing it up, and if you don't like something, you can always change it. You know, at the end of the day, it's just how you're organizing yourself and your time. Yeah. Um, some people only check their emails once in the morning, once in the evening. I guess I've never really thought about doing that. <laughs> um, it's just open as another tab on my browser. Yeah. Um, but that can really help some people. How have you found Lincoln University um, being a student here? Um, in general, I, excellent really. Um, I've had a really good positive experience so far. Even before I joined uh, the doctoral school, obviously being here for undergrad, I successfully applied to the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Scheme, EUROS, and was given some funding to do some additional research on my own and uh, that was really useful. I think that put me in great stead for my research masters. Within the doctoral school, they're always we're always having seminar series. Um, being in my field, I'm part of the ecology and evolution working group. So once a month we'll have teams meetings with the faculty that are in our area and we'll discuss ideas we've got throwing around we want a bit of feedback on and that's a bit more of a bit more of an informal experience and I think that really builds a more personal relationship with um, not only your supervisor but also the other staff uh, within your research area people that you might want to collaborate with or even just ask advice yeah. um, I'm often asking what I feel are silly questions to my supervisor. Is this how you report this particular thing in a paper? Um, should the word semi-aquatic be hyphenated? It should be, apparently. Um, so definitely, I think there's a lot of opportunities and support. Um, we've had additional drop-in workshops that we've had the chance to do. They're always advertising 
kind of next stage career moves, um, PhDs in various fields, um, conferences that are going on. Yeah. Um, Emily and I, um, who you interviewed earlier, are actually hosting an academic conference oh, here wow. at the uni. Um, yeah. And we've had some help from the doctoral school kind of organising that because none of us have really done anything like that before. Yeah. And I think we really underestimated how much um, behind the scenes work goes into essentially just having a few talks, putting yeah. up a few posters and going out for dinner. Well, that's a really good like, experience to have, like you said, because um, it like gives you life skills obviously Absolutely. um so what would you say to someone looking to come to lincoln university want to do some research or a, a phd here um any advice to them i'd say that the most important thing for postgraduate study in general after your undergrad is choosing something that you want to do because if you choose the masters by research route like i have um, you spend all day working on this particular project. So if it's something that you really don't like or if, or if it's something you particularly dislike, then that can be quite difficult. Um, but if you recognise that early, it's fairly simple to pivot to a project That's that it. you do enjoy. Yeah. Um, and I think the supervisor role is really important with that. And that's why I stayed on at Lincoln. I'd worked with uh, my current supervisor, Manabu, on the undergraduate research project that I did. And I felt that was really useful. And he said to me, Sean, if you intend on doing a master's here at Lincoln, I've got a few project ideas that I think would be really good and probably have a lot of potential for publishing and really useful and transferable skills because that was kind of the sales pitch I went in with. I said, Manabu, I really want some skills. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I didn't really at the time have any great fondness for evolutionary modeling. And to be honest, I, I don't love it now. I enjoy it. I think it's interesting, um, but I'm certainly not fanatical about it. Yeah. But I enjoy what I do. Um, and that's really important, mm. especially especially when you have to do it really like self-motivated. It's important that you enjoy it, I guess. So for anyone coming or deciding to do research, just make sure you enjoy what you're doing, really. <laughs> Absolutely. One of the benefits, though, obviously the drawback of research is that it's a research master's, is that it's so monolithic as this one thing that you have to do and hand in at the end. I do feel the flexibility that you get is very useful. Um, I play on a uni sports team, so on Wednesdays when it's uni sports season, I'm always away at a fixture. So being able to say, okay, I'm not gonna do anything Wednesday because I've got you know training and then traveling and then the game, and I won't wanna do anything when I come back, that's fine. I'll instead work Saturday. So Wednesday and Sunday are my days off as opposed to Saturday and Sunday. And that can even switch around, you know, afternoons and mornings. Um, it depends on you. Um, so I think that's one of the great strengths, one of the great strengths of a uh, Masters by Research. Yeah. Thank you for um, telling me all about it today. Um, You're very welcome. And for someone coming to the university, um, hopefully they found this useful. It was great to hear um, about your experience. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, I've really had a good time here at Lincoln and Truly, I would recommend it.